Hey guys! Are we here? <laughs> We're here. I I'm here. You're here. Uh, I do have, though, some important information that we need to get out first. But we're going to go to our roving uh, reporter that we have out. We have a roving we reporter. We do have. We do yeah. have a roving reporter here at the SLC news station. I thought this was news. Yeah. Uh, it's the second little thing down. Yeah, if we can get that. Oh, that, not that one. We're going we're gonna to have to switch back to the Zoom. Uh, open this. Okay, perfect. There's... There she is. Hopefully you guys can hear. Make make sure that desktop audio is turned in. We won't be able to hear hear Liz, but Liz, can you give us an update? Lindsay made it in another video. <laughs> Chris, Kevin, Dan. Don't wave, Rusty. Keep driving. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are on the road. They are. Oh, as usual, we can't hear Liz. Oh, bummer. That's what they said. I don't know whether we... I don't know what's going on over there. Oh, it was showing that you were going. Maybe Joshua just can't hear you. No sound for Liz. Well, we can see her beautiful face. <laughs> Glad See to ya. Have you. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, I appreciate her. Um, I, I texted her last night. And I was like, "Hey, when we come in, you're going. We're going to have to zoom, have a zoom meeting, so we can hear or so we can see you." But I'm sorry that you couldn't hear her. I thought that we had the audio on there. I don't know what it was showing. It was playing. It was showing that it was playing, but it just wasn't doing it. Yeah. But you don't you believe everything you hear. <laughs> yeah. Don't. Oh, uh, I'm sure. It, she was giving a report. We were saying hi to everybody there. They're on their way down to the Weasel Show. Yes. In, in Dallas. Dallas. Yeah. In Dallas this time. She didn't want to do it anyway. Uh, but I was like, you got to. I need you in this video. Yeah. You have to be here. Well, what are we going to be doing today, Denny? Uh, well, we're continuing with our uh, novice uh, leather carving class. Okay. And I've done one, number one and number three, or number four. four. Yeah. On the list, I don't know why I skipped to number four, but I don't know what we did. We did one four, so now we're going to do two, and then on Friday we'll do number three. Yes, yes. Anyway, number two is this one here. But first off, I told you guys last week that I would uh, show you how to uh, actually sharpen a swivel knife blade, and I forget what this little tool is called again. Keen edge. A keen edge sharpener. Yes, that's right. But anyway, if if you will look at the, the edge of your blade, it's got a bevel on it on each side. <clears throat> this little tool has an adjustment screw on the top where you can slide this, this uh, tube in and out. And what you want to do is slide it, is adjust it to where your blade is sitting. Uh, let's see. Yeah. To where your blade is sitting approximately uh, level with your uh, with your stone, and I'm using a fine grit stone here. There's no sense in getting a heavy grit stone because you'll have a lot of uh, grind marks in your uh, in your blade after you're done anyway. And another thing, there is a, a little set screw on the side of this tool. I I don't use that set screw. I just leave it open, and I'll um, I'll show you why here in a minute. This adjusted to about how this blade is. Just to get that angle correct? Yeah, to get this angle about correct. And then you just top that, yeah, spin then, that top thumb. Yeah. So now we're sharpening here. This is this is if you have messed up your edge on your blade? Yeah, or if you want to change the, the bevel angle oh, okay. on your blade. A lot of blades might be too steep, you know, and, and not spread your cuts out as wide as you like. But, mm -hmm. uh, but anyway... You can you can use oil on your stone. I'm going to use a little water because I didn't bring any oil with me. The water will work fine. And I'm just going to uh, drag this blade across the across the stone. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to. That's number two. I'm going to do ten strokes on this side. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
can. Now, I'm not using that set screw, that way I can just twist this blade over and turn it to the other side. And it's pretty important to do the same number of strokes on each side because if you don't, pretty soon you're, uh, the center of your, your blade is going to be, your blade is actually going to be off center, the edge of your blade. And this blade is already pretty sharp, so I'm not going to do any more than that. Yeah. But now I would put it in, in the swivel knife, you know, take it out of that tool and put it in your swivel knife and then strop this blade. Just, But strop it quite a bit after you've sharpened it because you've got a lot of uh, little stone marks. Yeah, groove lines in there yeah, now. little gro groove lines. But that's all there is to that tool. Yeah, I don't know, know if you can... Let's see. No... I don't know if you can see. Oh, yeah, there's a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you can see the marks on it. And now. just that little bit's just going to create just that extra little drag that you yeah. don't want. Yeah, and that's that's the whole purpose of your strop anyway, is to uh, polish those marks out and keep your blade nice and clean and smooth. All right. Well, you should have all of your all of your patterns that I put on um, there. If you check the description, I update it. If it's not there on yours, just refresh it, and then you'll get back caught up with us. And they'll have the PDF. Um, that's in there. It should be Denny Novice One Hyphen Four or something along those lines. And you have all four of those, the all four of those patterns on one page, and then each one calling the tools, the tools, um, where you're putting the tools at. What are you looking for? I didn't bring a ballpoint pen. Oh, okay. And then I can get one. And then uh, at the very top, you'll have Denny's picture and the uh, one through thirteen. One through thirteen of what, you, where your tools are going, where you use what tools. Yeah, yeah, and there are only seven tools here in this uh, novice uh, class that we're doing. If 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 you all followed us on the the advanced class, which we did first, we've done everything backwards. Yeah, this time, but uh, there are about ten or twelve tools, I think, in that in that deal. There, these are all included, mm -hmm. but there's there's a few more tools. We there. do have a new set coming. Um, it'll be the seven tools that you use in your novice classes, and then a swivel knife that comes with it. It's just a little bit different than the basic seven that we have, the basic nine, and the basic ten. You know, we didn't have a basic eight, but we're not going to call this one the basic eight either. We're going to call it the uh, what do I what do I call it? Low low novice stamping set, something along those lines. <laughs> All right. Okay. If you guys have been following along, you know that I've already taped the back of uh, this pattern with just packing tape. And front side, I'm going to, uh, first thing I need to do is uh, scribe my border on here and cut it. So while you go along, Dean was asking if you do, if you draw it in nice and crisp uh, with a ballpoint pen, why do you have to go back and swivel knife it? Would you like to answer? You want me Dean, to answer? You, you can answer. Well, the reason that we need to go ahead and swivel, and I'll let Denny talk after I talk about it, is you're cutting into the leather about a third of the way. A third to a half. Of the way through to give you that deep impression. Now, you're just not going to get that with your ballpoint pen. Sure, you can bevel along the lines that you made, and you can probably mash it down, but that cut is giving an extra little bit of relief for that leather, leather to be able to move around. I'm going to strop my knife now. Anything else you'd like to add uh, to that? Yeah, if you don't cut the line, you don't get as nice of a clean of a bevel as you do with a cut line. Uh, plus, you want to cut, like Tony said, a third to a half the way through your piece of leather. And uh, you want to bevel as deep as you cut. And if you only mark it, you can't, that's as deep as you can bevel, you know. Yeah. Yeah, then you just turn into mush and leather around instead yeah. of actually getting a good bevel on things. While you do that, I'm going to switch a lens around. You guys, just remember when you're cutting a straight line, the important thing is to watch in front of your knife where you're getting ready to cut and not behind your knife where you've already cut. Let's 
Well, after you cut that line, then we'll look at all, all the overhead so I can adjust this camera real quick. That line is cut. I'm just trying to get us a little more zoomed in over here. Okay. All right. Now we've got our borderline cut, and I always cut it first because when I'm uh, when I've got this pattern on and I'm tracing the pattern, I can feel that borderline when I get to it, and that's where I'll stop. Hopefully, I can feel it. Dean, with a stylus, you're still going to be doing the kind of the same thing as you are with the ballpoint pen. You're just not giving that leather enough relief. Yeah, the to... ballpoint pen rolls on the on the leather as opposed to just. Uh, yeah, and the stylus is going to do what the ballpoint pen does. It's, it's not going to cut that leather. And that's kind of what you need with a swivel knife. Yeah, they call this carving because you cut the leather. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, you aren't drawing on the leather. That's not the finished product. Maybe I'll have to zoom Liz on my phone, and I'll just hold my phone here so we can hear her. She'll come through my phone. <laughs> why do you not cut? Uh, why do you not connect the cuts when you do when you're swivel knifing? Connect the cuts. Like, oh well, mm -hmm. uh, for one thing, you don't want to overcut. Mm -hmm. You know, you're better off being just a little bit away from each line. You're better off doing that than than cutting over the line because once you make a cut in a piece of leather, it stays there for. I generally, uh, I think I've said this before, when I'm uh, tracing my pattern, I will generally start with a flower, the flower and the flower stem, and maybe, maybe these uh, chicken necks around it. Then I'll do my leaf if I have a leaf. All of my uh, main features is what I want to do first. You're right, Dean. Stamping the leather does not cut it. That's why you got to do it with a swivel knife. That's correct. And when you're uh, tracing these patterns, it's it's pretty hard to stay just perfect. So you've got to take that into consideration when you do start your cuts. You know, you might want to change what you've actually traced. Mm -hmm. Thing is, you want to make it look like it's supposed to look. So, and <clears throat> most people have a lot of trouble when they're first beginning uh, picking out the features that they're actually doing. You know, they're they're looking at this pattern mm -hmm. as a bunch of lines. But, but it's actually, a, on this type of tooling, it's a bunch of vegetation. You do, you've got a flower, and you've got a leaf, and you've got a bunch of these little stickers or chicken necks all around it. But anyway, I'm all, uh, I've am all i transferred my whole pattern, so now I'm going to just set that aside. And I'm going to pick up my swivel knife again, and I'm going to cut the pattern. No, first thing I'm going to do is lightly set this flower center. If you all have downloaded this uh, tool progression, it's a good idea to go buy it because I just about didn't. But I'm going to lightly set this. I'm not going to set it real deep because I'll probably reset it later on. If I've got it real deep, it'll be hard to get right back on the same line that I was. Now I'm going to start with the flower and, and cut this pattern out. Hmm, got a water bottle in the way. I was <laughs> I was busy moving my Facebook chat over here so I could see it too. It's still slightly. Oh. Denny, do you care if I hold your water over here with me? You go whenever right. You, you whenever go. you need it, just say spray me. Okay. I th I think I'm done with the water. For oh, okay. A while. Maybe for the. Duration. You could. You might need to be a little bit more. Specific to spray my leather instead of yeah. me. Okay, I will. Yeah, okay. I will. I'll be very specific. <laughs> Especially if I forget to be specific. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, I've got this flower drawn in. Now I'm going to cut this flower stem. 
and remember when I told you last week, you know, when you end up, a, when you cut the end of a line that just ends up out in the middle of the no, of nowhere, you don't want to just stop that cut abruptly. You want to feather that line out into a hairline. Yeah. Uh, Watch this. All right. Can you do it again, but get your yeah, hand I'll, out of the way? Yeah, I'll do another one right now. I don't know if I can get my hand out of the way. Okay. Is oh, that, nope. Am I out of the way? No, nope, come. Oh, let me see. Let me see that. Can you work uh, right in this area? Yeah. Can you see that? I can see that. All right. Starting this cut, but I'm coming up to the end of it, so I'm going to lighten up my cut and just feather that out into a hairline. Yeah. Being cantankerous over here with focusing. Well, and I'm cantankerous about the way when I'm cutting, too. I It's hard for me to pay attention to the camera and make the cut at the same time. So I'm sorry if you guys can't see it as well as you would like. Life is tough, you guys. Yeah. Don't you think? Life is tough, and then something else happens. That saying go? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Now I've cut my inside stickers, and I'm going to cut this leaf next. Starting with the stem. I zoomed it out just a touch to see if that would help it focus just a little bit better. John says the Barry King extra steep bevel tool will cut the leather. A third of the way through will cut it? A half of the way through? If you're trying to take a shortcut, which is not going to work out well in the end, if that's the way you're doing it. Yeah. Joshua asked um, about the Denny stamp kit. We talked a little bit about it. We have the end to the number process. It'll be the seven stamping tools that we have and a swivel knife so you'll be able to get that set we call the new kit denny's a well that's the low part if you don't know denny's last name is low l w l o w e don't tell the police that i'm on kind of on his land here oh okay uh is that's his stage last name My not his real name. <laughs> not his real last name <laughs> Uh, so that was what got the low novice stamping set, something along those lines. What's the thinnest leather you recommend using a swivel knife on? The thinnest leather that you can have very much good luck with will be a, a four to five ounce. Yeah, I mean you can get some good stuff in the three, but you need to be practice stuff. Yeah, you just need to be very, very careful with the leather. And then use that Bontex, that. use the Bontex behind it so your impression pushes to it. What do you need now? My dead weight. Oh, I'm sitting right here. <laughs> You're the dead weight. <laughs> okay, I've finished, uh, I've cut the border with a swivel knife, my, uh, and I've traced the pattern, and, and I've lightly set the flower center. I've cut the pattern with a swivel knife. I'm up to step six, which is to bevel the pattern starting with the border. So that's what I'm going to do right now. A lot of people, I, they've been asking about to push beveler. I guess if you've got a push beveler and want to use it, you're more than welcome to. But they asked me if I use one or not. Tell everybody, no, I don't. I guess it's personal preference whether whether or not you want to use it. If it works for you, then it use it. If yeah. it don't work for you, then use something else. Yeah. But don't go out and specifically buy one if you got another bevel. Up. Sometimes you just got to make it work what you what you got. Yeah. And if, and if I was doing this at, at my bench, uh, I've got a, a wider beveler that I would probably use. But we've only got one beveler in this beginner's kit, so that's what I'm going to use. My water bottle's empty, Denny. Well, I'm sorry about it. Do you have anything special in this water, or is it just water? Do I? Just water? <laughs> 
Do you mind? No. Okay. That's pretty good stuff. Dude. Tastes good enough for leather. Uh, Nicole? I can't believe you drank out of that. <laughs> oh, what? why? I got a steel gut, my friend. <laughs> why are you surprised if I do anything? I don't know. You and Rosie. Rosie the dog. She drinks out of my water bucket. Uh, Bontex or just just something not not corrugated or like a cereal box cardboard something like that that's not going to mash it down but it's going to give it just a little bit to be able to give that um, impression to go through and not go all the way through the through the leather just helps it push just a little bit more. What are we talking about to to carve on thinner leather? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I beveled my border. Now I'm going to start beveling the, the pattern itself, and I'm going to start with the flower bevel. That's what I told you guys before. And this, uh, this pattern, the main difference between it and the very first pattern that we did is it's, it's got to some, uh, some point with here. It's got some inside curves on the, the flower petals which you guys haven't done before, and it's got an actual leaf, which you guys haven't done before unless you did number four last week. <laughs> <laughs> if you've been going along with this, yeah. you've done number one and number yeah. four. Now we're taking a step back. And the progression of them is one, two, three, four right. of the different kind of details that you're kind of adding into it. Um, when we started, the reason we're doing it, I did it like we did it, is because I didn't realize we were going to go through all four of these patterns. Yep, and in the tool set, we will probably put a link to the U, the YouTube video, uh, just a, a QR code, so that you would be able to follow along with the tools that we've given you, um, and then you'll be able to download the patterns from there. Denny, will you talk just one second after you get done beveling your flower here, and then I'll, I, have so, I have something for you. Go ahead, give it to me. Well, uh, we had Cecil was asking, when you're using your swivel blade, are you, are you cutting flat? Are you tipping forward? Okay. Are you tipping back? What part of the blade are you using? So we're going to be on this kind of camera here, so if you would do your blade kind of like right. this kind of thing. Let me wet this piece of All right. Can I borrow your drinking, me spray you? your drinking water? <laughs> 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 my drinking water. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the way you hold your uh, swivel knife is is I like to hold the yoke of my swivel knife uh, let me, about to that first knuckle. Can you? T oh, okay, yeah. If you can see it there, and that is my power. This finger here is my power, and these two fingers and my thumb are actually my steering wheel, and. I like to have my life, my knife fairly long. I like it to be from about this this middle knuckle down to the heel of my hand. That's about the length that I like. If you can see how I've got that set up. Now everybody's not like that. Jim Linnell uses a very very short knife. A lot of people do, but if you're asking me how I do it and how I get along with it, that's how I do it. But anyway. You want to you want to start with with your first knuckle about in that cradle, mm -hmm. and and your fingers down here towards the bottom. And if you'll notice, I've got my fingers against the leather. That'll give me a lot of control. Yeah. And uh, but uh, anyway, I'll tip the knife forward. Can, are not, you able to not side to side? I got gotcha. you. Forward. If if you can see there, I'm so I'm you're tip cutting. Forward. You're cutting with the tip of the blade that's away from the palm of your hand. Yes. And the deal is. When you're cutting a nice, long, straight line, you don't have to tip your knife quite as far. You can have more blade in it. But if you're cutting a real tight circle, you've got to tip it really far forward. And why we do that, if you look at it, the blade starts to hit it at the cut, and it starts to cut, and then allows that tip to get deeper in there. If we were just cutting it with your knife flat all the way down on there... You're, well, uh, lift your fingers you, up. You're starting on a blunt edge. Yeah, you would be bulldozing through it. Yeah, uh, if bulldozing be. is something you like to do, uh, yeah. go out to the dirt and play there. Yeah, not in your leather. Yeah, but anyway, the longer and and uh, 
straighter your cut is, the more blade you can have in. Okay. Straighter up and down, you can hold your knife. The tighter the curve, the more forward you want to lean your knife. But don't lean side to side. When you lean side to side, you undercut. Mm -hmm. And when you're, uh, if you cut around a tight circle with your blade real flat, straight, more straight up and down, then you'll scalp the leather. You know, you'll start to actually cut some of it off the top. You can see when you start to tilt. You can see this little cut I did right here. You can see the the. Yeah, you can see where it actually scalped the top of the leather off. Yeah, the little arrow pointing yeah. thing. Let's see yeah. that thing. Yes. Yep. All right. We better get back to swivel knife. We're going to get this done in an hour. All right. All right. Yeah. Uh, we've beveled all three, all four edges around the coaster. I'm not sure what Joseph on Facebook was asking about. Why did you not do all three sides? I'm not sure what that means. Uh, Marie, our live shopping days are on Thursday at 2 p.m. Central. You know, you guys, it really doesn't matter which line you bevel first, but I don't like to bevel a line that goes past an intersecting line, because then I'll have to go back and, and re-bevel it. If you'll notice, all these lines right here, I'm going past them because I'm going to bevel them next. If I beveled this line first and then bevel this line, I would flatten that little area back out and I would actually... To make it look good, I would have to go back and re bevel it. You're all good, Joseph. I figured it was something that you just missed seeing. Now, I'm doing this because of what I just told you. This line here is going to run into that, and if I had beveled it and then beveled past it, I would have to go back and re bevel that this little corner. So we're just kind of thinking what lays on top of what? Yeah, just try to plan your cuts, your uh, bevels. Plan your cuts out and then plan out what line you're going to bevel. You can't always, there's always exceptions mm -hmm. to rules, you know. I mean, like this line here, I would have to do that leaf before I bevel this line if I was going to follow through to what I just told you. But when you can, do it like I was saying. Okay, now I've got the flower beveled. I'm going to bevel this flower stem. And you guys, when I told you to uh, feather your cuts out, you want to you want to bevel it the same way. You want to feather that bevel out right at the end. If you will listen to how I bevel when I get to the end of this line. Yeah. Did you hear me? I I heard your. Taps right. subside. Yes, yes, and that's what that's the way you want to do it because that oh, wow. that will show a little bit of finesse. You know, if you, if you just stop sudden, stop dead there, you just got a blunt line. That you yeah. When you're beveling, what side of the line do you bevel? Your flat part is going to go against like for us is going against the flower petal and the angle part of it's going towards where the background is going to be so the angle part of your beveling tool needs to go towards what's going to be the background yeah this let me see yeah this is actually the bevel this part here in this case it's a checkered face but it's actually the part that's doing the work the bevel this line what this This part of your tool here just sets against the line, mm -hmm. and it's it's just your guide. But this is actually the bevel back here. So when I tell you to bevel the side of the line, you want to you want to use that checkered part. That's your bevel. But uh, before we always we marked all of our background areas, mm -hmm. and I guess maybe we ought to do that again here. So maybe it will alleviate a little bit of confusion to some of you. I'm going to mark these background areas. All right, we'll get it, Don. Don just mentioned that.
So we're beveling towards the background. Our angle of our tool is going to be towards that background. Yes. And a background area will always bevel down. Always. Always. Never not. Always yes. Never not. Always yes. yes. There you go. Write it down. Write it Write it That's on your desk. Work. Always not. Right, not. Wait. What'd you say? Never not. Never always. not. <laughs> Never not. I don't know always. Always yes. Backgrounds will. Okay. I'll always back background towards the. Okay. I'm whatever. Gonna, I'm getting ready to bevel this line right here. Yeah. And if you'll notice, there's background area right here. So that's the side of the line I have to bevel on. I will have to bevel this direction. I hope you all can see that. What's the best way to see a background areas on a pattern you didn't draw? Well, if you don't have the sample of the completed project, try try to look at your at your pattern not as a set of lines, but as as a bunch of vegetation, or as as a bunch of features. Like if you've got if if you're beveling a horse, you know, if you're beveling the hind end of a horse, look at it as the hind end of a horse, not a line. Don't you know? ride your horse, bevel your horse. Yeah, bevel your horse. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's that's where most most beginners are have a lot of problem is trying to figure out what it is because they always just think it's a line. Tangled up leather said, "Why you're being specific? Just tell me to spray myself." <laughs> okay, I gotta go back and bevel my leaf, or you guys will think I'm. Just joking with you about the order that I do things. Sean says he tries to mark the pattern before he even traces it. That's good. I don't know. Whatever, whatever it takes, you know, just realize which the side of the line that you bevel on is the side that you're depressing, and you're highlighting the, the side that you don't bevel. Now she says it's it's way past relevant that I finally read their chat. Who's that? A tangled up leather. See, when I get, when I'm behind the keyboard, she's my best friend. Then when I get over here, I get the grief. <laughs> Life is different over here. <laughs> it is on this side of the table. It's not always greener on the other side of the fence. Denny is using a, a maul. Denny would recommend a maul. But if you have a hammer or a mallet, what, 15 to 16 ounces is a good range to kind of stay but, in? Yeah, I like 16 ounce to, to carve leather with. A raw, a, raw, a raw hide mallet? That'll work fine. Yeah, just make sure it's raw hide or a poly head. Yeah, don't use a steel hammer. Yeah. That's the main thing. And that's one thing, even with the, um, you know, Osborne tools have uh, lifetime warranties on them, limited lifetime warranties on them if they break. But you know what voids a warranty? A steel hammer. Well, if you mushroom, even if you use a poly one and you mushroom the top of your tool, your uh, CS Osborne tool, then it voids the warranty because you were using the tool wrong. Your tool shouldn't be mushroomed on top. Leather tools really don't need to be hit as hard as a lot of people hit them. Moisture content is very important. If you don't have a good moisture content, to, you're always going to have trouble. You'll need to hit your tool harder because it's dry. Sean, I don't believe we have a Scandian, Scandinavian themed trading card. We welcome one though. Sean was uh, the one that his mother had passed away, and we helped him out with some earned leather. Oh yeah. I don't oh, know. Yes. I don't know that he's received it yet. You gave your you gave your input on that project as well on getting all the leather sorted. Jessica said it would have been funny twenty minutes ago. <laughs> what to? Uh... Tell me about Scandinavian, Scandinavian things, leather work. What would I be doing? 
Andrew walked by and I was getting a drink of water. And he had to stop and come back and like, what the heck was happening? <laughs> no, I think he was going to do a trading card in Scandinavian style and then send it to us. I well, hope that's, that's what he was cool, being. Because well, I'm kind of interested. You've intrigued him. Oh, is our light not on? We're welcome there. Oh, they can look in. They can see all the stupidness I do. There were uh, some guys, Terry, I don't can't remember how to pronounce his last name. Cadenbach, I think, is his last name. Been a customer of ours for a long time. They were in last week about the time we got done and I was out on out in front and they came by and said, We would sure like to see one of your videos and I said you were here in the store while we were doing one. You should have come back. Yeah, if you guys are ever in the store on Wednesday from eleven to finish or Friday from eleven to finish. Let them know that you'd like to come back in the studio. We'll set up a chair. We'll set up a chair so you can sit here and watch it live. You'll, we yeah. had, um, I think he was from Kentucky. Maybe it's Tennessee. I can't remember right now. Uh, Rob, he came in and got to sit right at the table as we did it. Yeah, we need people that we can bother. Yeah. It, it takes the attention off of us. That's <laughs> right. We can make fun of them instead of making fun of ourselves. That's right. <laughs> Got a cheap beginner from Amazon. My mount's 11 ounces, and it works fine. I do want to upgrade to a Barry King. As far as the mall? Hello, Amer yeah. Hello America says there's 71 people watching on YouTube. Wow. And there's only 15 thumbs up. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that we aren't getting thumbed up. You know what else I was noticing? So we, we um, the notification bell... That you tell everybody to hear so you can get you can keep going on. I'll okay. talk while you hammer. Next step is the backgrounder. And the backgrounder is a pretty simple tool. We went through it last week, so I'm not gonna say much about Just it. Just a matte backgrounder. Yeah. Just whatever the background tool of your choice, whatever you want to use. We're gonna have to teach Denny how to tool upside down and backwards. Out, how, to, how to stay out of your way. Yeah, you're very good at keeping your project hidden. Well, I guess that's one of my faults, huh? One of the many. <laughs> but we have, what, 46,000 subscribers on YouTube? And it says only 33.1 per, what, 3.1 thousand, so 3,100 of them out of the 46,000 actually have the notification bell hit. Huh. I wonder why they don't ever show up on time. And it said 100% of those notifications were delivered. So hit that bell. Just ring that bell. Ring my bell. And you'll get to hear more of this. Ring my bell. Ring, ring. Ring my bell. I don't know if you all watched <laughs> that movie, Lonesome Dove. Yeah. It was a miniseries. When they were in Texas, they had a, a Mexican cook. And at mealtime, he'd always ring the, the dinner bell and Gus got mad at him and made him quit ringing it then they all left went towards Montana and the old Mexican was still there and he was out ringing the chime he said I'll ring that damn bell if I want to <laughs> <laughs> William we will be doing live shopping I hope I think that's what's going to be the after party today is me setting up the table because I'm I'm lonesome dubbed today. Speaking of what, you know what we should do? What? We should check in with our roving reporter. Oh, yes. See how things are going on the road. Let's see. I said, I told her to Zoom me, so let me get invalid meeting ID. Okay, well, I got to do another new meeting. Hang on. Start, start a meeting. Wi-Fi or cellular data. Oh, I gotta send her this meeting invite. I gotta send her the new meeting invite. Paste. Okay. The antiqued soul is trying out Twitch today versus YouTube. The antique soul, what are you on? What are you on uh, the YouTube? Hey, Vanessa. 
Did you see how quickly I read that Twitch chat, though? I, I was right on top of it. I didn't see it, but I heard it. Yeah. Scott did have a good point earlier. He was saying, ah, Shandon H. Was saying, if you think of your page of like a coloring page, it's not really any different. You're picking out your background and your foreground when you're coloring a picture. That's right. That's right. And I didn't look at my phone and it was time to admit Elizabeth. I think Jameson wants to come in here. Let's see if I can hear. Can I, can I hear you now? Oh, she's connecting to audio. They don't look like they're on the highway because they're doing, they're, I can see them turning more. Oh, now they're picking up speed. There, there she is. Hey, there you are. All right, let's see. <laughs> let's see our roving reporter here. Elizabeth, how was the ride going? <laughs> doing great. <laughs> oh, yeah. Still, everybody's still the same people in the van? Haven't lost yeah. anybody? No. <laughs> are you guys twitching? Uh no, we're still we're still on uh, YouTube. You're hanging out with everybody, but I wanted to be able to hear your voice. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. we so couldn't hear before. you before. I, that's so weird. Tony and I could hear each other before. Yeah, I don't know what was happening, but oh, now everybody can see the top of our uh, top of our thing. All right, Denny's gonna I keep. Gonna I need water. Oh, Denny needs water. I didn't have water earlier, Liz, so I just drank out of his bottle. More than once. <laughs> Yeah, he was like, I can't believe you did that. And I was like, I'm sh I'm not sure why you couldn't think I would do anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are we on it? Very nice. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We're, we're, next step is our uh, pear shader. And this leaf has two lobes on it, on each petal. And the other leaves we've done, or the other petals we've done so far only had one. So that's a bit different. Liz, do you have any insight for our tooling here? How flowery does our tooling look? It looks very flowery. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, she is so awesome. She is on top of it. That's why we have her out in the field going down to the Wisa show because she's got a handle on just about everything, whether it has to do with leather or fashion or rocks and gems, knife sheaths, blades, blade smithing. She's got a husband that does that. So, number one. Hey. In that in that vehicle she's in, just about anything in the world can be done. I mean, there's people from all walks of life there. <laughs> that is true. There's a lot of things that could be taking place in there. All right. I, I think everybody might want to know that the power hammer is almost done. Oh, Chris's all power right. hammer? Yeah, the, the power hammer. So just for everybody out there that was wondering, in like two or three weeks we'll have a power hammer. Gonna have a gonna have a power hammer. Well, let the let the celebrations begin. <laughs> the neighbors are going to love it. <laughs> All right, we'll see you. Bye. Bye, guys. Okay. Now this next feature is a leaf, which we haven't had a leaf of this sort. So I'm going to when you uh, when I'm gonna pear shade this leaf, I'm not gonna pear shade perpendicular to this leaf stem. I'm going to have quite a bit of an angle up towards the top of the leaf. And the first one, I'm going to go out and actually pinch the edge of this leaf with the thumbprint, or the, the air shape. Now I'm going to skip a little bit of space and do the same thing. I'm actually pinching the edge of that leaf. But if you notice, what it's done is it makes it, gave it kind of a ruffled look. And that's what I'm going after, is that ruffled look. Remember to have a lot of angle up towards the top of this leaf. But now you can see where it makes that leaf look like it just ruffled. Nice, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a scalloped kind of looking leaf. Yes, yes. But now, in, when we do uh, Friday's... Uh, pattern. It's got a leaf that's similar to this, but it actually has scallops on it. It's not just a straight cut leaf. So, so it'll be done just a bit different than this is, but if you notice our leaf, it looks like a nice little ruffled leaf now. Now I'm going to go do all these chicken necks. Main thing to remember, 
when you're using a pear shader is don't overuse it and always tip it a bit. You're holding up, you're pointed end of the pear. That's the tip part that's up, yeah. the pointed end? Well, it depends. You know, if there's an area that's too small for me to use oh, then this, this, uh, this fat part, then I'll turn it around and use the, the thin end. The humpy part of the pear? Yeah, right. Then you go with the <laughs> narrow part yeah, of the pear? Right. But I think everything that I'm going to do here today, I'm going to be using the fat part. Yeah. What thickness leather do you tool upon? Depends on what the project is. These coasters are what? These are about nine? To eight, nine, seven, eight, or eight, nine ounces. You can go down to a four. If you've practiced up and you're using something back behind it, you can get down to a three. And you can use saddle skirting. Yeah. Six, 16 ounce saddle skirting you can tool on. That's all I used to tool, was use saddle skirting. Because okay. you were making saddles? Because I was making saddles. Okay, we're done with our uh, pear shader. Now I'm I'm going to what do what they call a stutter line on these uh, on these flower petals, and I'm going to use a camouflage a camouflage tool for that. And I'm not going to try and and accentuate this part of the oh, tool. Yeah, All right, you. Yeah, you I'm point not, at the tool. I'm going to try and not accentuate this line here. What I'm going to try and accentuate are these little. So about midway up the. Well, I just want to tip the, I want to tip the tool forward. Yeah. Got it here like this. I'm going to tip it forward a little bit so it's on this edge as opposed to this edge. But still here. starting at the flower center. Right. Start with flowers. Well, no, a little way oh, okay, away I see. from you the gotta... flower center. See what I've done. Let's can All right. kind of raise that up. Yeah, see what I've done there. I'm going to do that on all four petals. Tip it forward just a little bit. And each stroke that I take, I'm so going to make a little. That? Can you do that one like? Can you do it like that? I'll try. But if you notice, I did each one a little bit lighter because I just want to fade it out. Okay, I've done that. Now, let's go to the actual flower center. And I'm going to go right around that little row of beads in our, in our flower center. This is what we talked about last time, why we're setting our flower center lightly. Now, yeah. that, now we're going to mash some of it down, and we'll be able to set that flower center one more time and get a good impression on yeah. it. But if, but if you'll notice, it doesn't look real pretty yet because we mm -hmm. haven't uh, finished our flower center out. But it made it look... Substantially deeper, right there again. Well, and even if you look, center. if you look across it like that, oh, if I can get it, you can see that that flower center is kind of sunk down in there, but just at, uh, around the edge of it, it is. That flower center is just up enough to where this domed flower center that we're going to use in a minute yeah. is going to just really pop off there. Okay, and we're going to do that, but we've got a couple of things to do first. I'm going to use this uh, see Vayner, this uh, V715 Vayner. And I'm going to get right up against flower center, right on the edge of this petal. And this vayner, I'm not going to hit straight up and down. I'm going to tip it too, like this. And I hope you can all see that. It looks pretty good to me. But I'm right up against that flower center. Uh oh, what do we do? I see a little dark. Let's see the dark camera on. Which one? Oh, you know what? Because it had a battery and I'm not a plug. <laughs> Just a minute. We're still here, folks. Okay. You can still see me, so I'm going to go ahead with the rest of this, this vein work here. But you can probably see what I'm doing better from up from up above there anyway. Sorry about that. It's been a while since we've had a camera die. So now I've gone around all four flower petals, and if you see, I've re-accentuated what I've beveled before. But I'm going to take this same tool, this vayner, and I'm going to uh, okay, if I could 
get this where you can see it. Right here, I'm going to make myself a little spot, an imaginary aim line. That's where I'm going to aim this tool. But there again, I'm going to start right up against this flower petal. And I'm going to aim right towards that point that I just made. But there again, I'm not flat. I'm, I'm tipping this tool quite a bit. Now I'm going to move it just a little bit, but I'm still going to aim towards that one point. I'm going to move it just a little bit and aim towards that point. And I'm going to do that all the way across this uh, flower stem. A wood burning warrior. If you're short on cash and didn't have a tool that could do that, could you use a screwdriver? I mean, yeah, could you can sure. use anything? I mean, that's use how these tools were developed. Someone took a piece of steel and hammered something out or filed something out. Yeah, use a spoon, yeah. use something, just give yourself yeah. something to hit on. Uh, yeah. Heath, which part of the cow is the best quality? I assume shoulders. You can also list from the best quality. To the least quality parts. It depends on what if, you're building. If you if you're making belts and and something that you want good firm leather, get a bend. You know because cowhide cowhide is tanned generally uh, in sides, mm -hmm. which is half of a cowhide split right down the back, and up towards the back is the firmest, densest part of the hide. Mm -hmm. Down towards the the flank and the belly is where it gets the grain gets looser. Uh, so, yeah, up towards the back, a bend, a bend, you get rid of the shoulder and you get rid of the, of the belly. So all you've got is good, firm leather. Yeah, you got it. That's usually the uh, strap or belt cutter's best friend. Yeah. Okay, next tool, we're going to go back to our flower center. And we're, we, re we set the flower center fairly lightly to begin with because now I'm going to set it back over there. And there's no way I could match up. Mm -hmm. So I set it lightly. Now I'm going to set it really firm. There you go. You jump. It jumped just a minute. Yeah, but but the leather was damp enough where it's not going to be noticeable. Yeah, just that little spot that's there is where the tool kind of jumped over. So just make sure that that's why you have that the firm surface. And you know what? Then he's been doing this for more years than I've been alive, and the tool jumped just a little bit. Yeah, it happens. It happens. But anyway, now your flower is basically done other than your finish cuts. So I'm gonna the next tool will be and the final actual tool will be the the mule's foot. So I'm gonna start right here at the top of the flower stem. And I'm gonna hit it fairly sharply and I move it just a little bit and I'm just gonna walk down this flower stem and each stroke I'm gonna make a little bit lighter to where they just fade out and disappear. See what I've done there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Final step. If I can borrow my swivel knife from Tony. Well, there you are, my friend. Thank you. So the final step is going to be our finished cuts. Some people call them decorative cuts. It doesn't matter. Call them whatever you want to. But I'm going to, oh, no, I forgot my veiner on my leaf. That's another thing, you guys. We've got a leaf here. So I'm going to use this veiner, this same V715 veiner, and I'm going to point up towards the top of the leaf, not not perpendicular to this stem, but point it up towards the top of the leaf, and tip your tool a little bit again. Can not we try flat. something with this one? We can try it. What if I turn your, your board like that, and you come over here, here this way, and you work that way, since you can slide your legs all the way underneath the table? Yeah. I'll move out of your way. Okay. Can you see where I am there? Oh, I love it. And I'm, I'm tipped forward a little bit. I'm not flat. But I'm just going to give it a nice little shot there. And our, and our tool is going is curving this way. Yeah, but you can curve the tool either way. I've okay. seen it done, and I've done it both ways, too. But I like it when it, it curves, like you said. And you can make these as close together or far apart as you want. I've got four vein marks on this stem right now. So I'm going to match the other side the same way. Urban just found out it was Wednesday because we were live. He wasn't sure what day we were on. <laughs> okay. Now I've veined that leaf. 
Now, I'm going to do decorative cuts. I'm going to start with the flower petals. And you can do these decorative cuts however you want. Yeah, if you're fine, you'll have to, um, we'll have to switch to that other camera. I'll wait. No. Yeah, you can see me up above pretty well there now. I'm going to start right in the middle of this flower petal. Make a pretty good cut. With a decorative cut, you want to start pretty deep, be very definite about it, and immediately lighten up and, and bring it out into a hairline. And I'm just going to graduate these cuts down. Go on to the side. Follow the shape of the leaf. And remember, I haven't talked anything about the flow of this pattern today, but to this flower, everything flows towards the direct center of this flower petal. All these cuts, if, if you followed through, they would end up right in the center of that flower center. Dean can't see. He must have closed his eyes. Well, hopefully I'll, I'll finish these cuts and then we'll show it. I bet through. you he was in his sleeping bag and he zipped it shut. <laughs> with a zipper? Yeah. That's usually what you do with a zipper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, can you see those cuts? See how I started kind of in the middle of that petal up towards the top? And I started really deep, but I immediately let pressure up and let it just float out into a hairline. And then the next cut, I graduated it just a bit shorter. But everything heads right towards that flower center. Okay. And you still got a little bit of a curve in it to create that circular flow. Yeah. Decorative cuts are never straight. Mm -hmm. They're always on a little bit of a curve. Now I'm just going to start with these chicken necks. What are the dimensions of that square? It's a 4 by 4 I would say 4 by 4 with a 0.5 radius on the corners. I don't know what they are. <laughs> Sounded good, didn't it? Didn't I sound smart right then? It's smarter than me. <laughs> Five radius. Yeah. Also, what are the dimensions of a trading card? Ask Ask Kevin. Just pick a piece of leather and call it a trading card. Ours, if you type in trading card on our website, it'll pull up the shape that we have of it, and I think it has the sizes on there. I forget. It's a just a hair larger than a credit card. Here, I got one right here. I think as long as it's one of yours and not one of. Got a. Got a little DL on it. Not one of Kevin's? Yeah. Kevin's are 8x8 eight eight or larger. Uh, 3 and 7 eighths by 2 and 3 quarter. And that's just average size. Jim Linnell is the one that started this yep. trading card craze. And when he was here, we asked him about it. And he said, well, I started out just a regular baseball trading card size, mm -hmm. you know, but there's no cut and dried answer to it. You Pick a piece of leather you want. Yeah. The gist of what he did it for was just to get people creating more and getting in tune with their tools and using their using their tools. Right. And then they're like, oh, well, you want to see other people's work? That's a great little business card to send off to sure. us. Here's my work. Here's your work. How can I take from yours or you take from mine, whatever. Exactly. Okay. Now I've got I've got my mule's foot and oh, yeah. and my decorative cuts there, but I'm gonna I'm not gonna end with my decorative cuts there. If we had a really big mule's foot, I would use it right here where this, all several lines are coming together right there, and I want to take the focus off of the end of those lines and put it somewhere else. So I'm gonna make and right here I've got the same thing and right here. So I'm gonna use my swivel knife. It's the center foot, Dean. Not a right or a left mule's foot. It's the center foot. But I'm just going to graduate a couple of cuts down there. What if you did that with your veiner and just held it flat on there? You could do it with a veiner. You yeah. can do it with... You could do it with a spoon. Use, use what you've got. For, experiment. Experiment. Experiment on it. Yeah. <laughs> experiment. Then you're going to fill up your water again. I'm getting thirsty. <laughs> I will. Just for you, I'll keep a full water bottle. 
DB asks a question that I think everybody likes to ask. Are there any good resources on selling leather goods online? I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, I don't know of any resources myself because I don't sell leather online. A fingernail, yeah, you could use a fingernail too if you wanted to. You know, there's a lot of people that sell stuff on Etsy. There's Facebook Marketplace. You can just type in the in uh, Google and click the shopping thing and find it. What are you worth? What is your time worth? What is your talent worth? What's it worth to you? And don't sell yourself short. If you sell, if you sold a four pack of coasters of hand tooled things like that, what would you sell a four pack with a little stand? With a stand? Yeah, we need to. We, oh, that was well, a. I don't know. You know that's you know you guys. Either get real proud of yourself or be real humble. You know, that's that's the two choices you've got. If I was selling a Denny pack of four coasters with a, with, a, with, a, with a little holder. With a, with, a hand, with a holder that has no tooling on it, just the coasters are tooled. Okay, we've spent an hour today. It took me an hour to tool this, mm -hmm. approximately. And of course, I would put a finish on it, too, and, and a few other little things. So, say, an hour and a half. Okay. Yeah, figure out what what you want for your time. If if I wanted to make fifty dollars an hour, I would charge seventy five dollars for this mm -hmm. for each coaster. But that's an if, right? You know, you've just got to decide what your time is worth and and what you think your market will bear. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, for if, a, for if, set for a set of those, if we were going to do a set of those with a stand. And Denny doing it at a normal speed and not at a teaching speed, we seventy five to one hundred. I don't think you'd be scared of maybe around the fifty dollar mark. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be be bad either. Right. But no, don't sell your short self short. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you're if you're just wanting to practice, shoot, sell them for the cost of your material. Mm -hmm. If you're wanting to make some money out out of it. You've got to figure out what your time is worth, but you've also got to figure out what people will pay you for your time. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you do good enough work to charge a lot of money per hour, charge it. If, if you're a beginner just starting to do things, you aren't going to get as much money as someone who's got a big name out there who, who's world class, you know. Yep, there's other, there's other streamers uh, or video creators, content creators that are on YouTube. Uh, what Couture or Leather it does a lot of stuff, and I believe it's he is just a single guy that does it, but his wife does help him, and he has a video on um, pricing things, and I think Jessica or uh, on Twitch said something about about that. Um, there's that one. I think Don Gonzalez has done a couple of just kind of talking and stuff on there. Um, Man, just get out there and try it. If everybody's buying it up and it's not worth your time to do it anymore, then you probably need to raise your price. Yeah. <clears throat> you know what bugs me is people who are sitting here saying, man, I can't afford to do this and I can't afford to do that. And then they start telling you about their business. Man, I'm so busy, I can't keep up. If you're that busy, increase your price a little bit mm -hmm. where you can keep up and if you say, "Well, I'm not going to get as much business that way," it doesn't matter. If you're do, if you've got more business than you can take care of anyway, make a little more on each one and try to keep up. Just a business partner team. Thanks, Striker. Just look at it as you're you're building up so that you can live off of and be comfortable. Like you yeah. know what you can live off. Of. Yeah. You know what you can live off of. Build up to that. Yeah. Slowly add to where you can get to where everybody says that job. Yeah. Small businesses uh, very seldom make very much money the first year or two that they're yeah. in business. You know, if you can keep your head above water and keep your shop open, you're doing pretty darn well when you start out. So keep that in mind. But anyway, I don't know if they can you show this over the overhead camera to see. Here's the one that, uh, the number two that uh, we copied off of. So that's basically what we have there. 
I don't know if that fixes the volume from, they were saying the volume was going up, up and down. Yeah. Let's see, what else was it? What else? Was, I was going to say something else. Oh, I was going to talk about like Walmart. Have you ever seen before the stuff will be in the aisle and then they'll make like a center cap for it or a cap out of the aisle and they'll raise the price up? Yeah. And the stuff just disappears. It wasn't disappearing on the shelf, but they set it out yeah. somewhere else and they put yeah. a little bit higher price on it and now it goes away. Yeah, after where people, <laughs> where people yeah. can see it and they think, well, man, this got to be good, you know. But still, you know, be a little bit humble to begin with. Mm -hmm. You know, just realize that that you aren't you aren't Don Gonzalez or you aren't to Denny Jim Lowe. Linnell. Well, Denny Linnell, Denny Lowe never makes any money. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That's what I don't make any either. That's what I'm drinking out of yeah, your water bottle. Drinking out of my <laughs> water bottle. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see. After cutting everything, do you condition the leather, burnish the edges? I'm new to this. Sure. What would be your what sure. would be your finish up to, now, to achieve this, this from that? This, all I did with this is put a light coat of Neat's foot oil on it. And then I used, uh, I this was probably, probably Sheridan Brown antique paste on it. And uh, then after I, well, oil. And then a coat of uh, Resist, which I used Master's Quick Shine. And then I used the antique paste on it. Wipe that all off. The antique paste settles in all your cuts and depressions. And that's what gives it the two-tone look. But after that's wiped off and dried, then I'll go over it with a... I use Master's Quick Shine for a sealer, too, just a top coat. And that's done. But yeah, if I was doing this to sell, I would have beveled these edges and burnished them. And then done my antique. You know what I like what you did with this one? Is you had that mule's foot that was there, and then you cut you a line through the middle of yeah. it. Yeah. I like that little. Yeah. Like but you can, you know, you can you can do that. You can do a hundred different things. Yeah. I mean, and this stem, you got a couple little yeah, cut, cut marks on your Cut marks. You know, it, these two aren't the same, but they're pretty similar. You've got to be someone like Tony that's just wanting to find a difference between them, you know? <laughs> I mean, really... Well, and part of it is just so that I can, you know, on that on that part is I'm pointing out like, hey, just get out there and try it. Right. You don't make one the same every single time. I, no, I can't. I didn't, I wasn't even looking at this finished one when I did this. Yeah. Because I wasn't trying to make them the same. I was trying to make you guys realize that you can do things different, you know. There's certain features that go into it, but then the adaptations of the decorations that's a lot of right. Asians in there. A lot of Asians, yes. Yeah. Is what sets it kind of apart. Saddle soap, after you do that last coat of quick shine, sometimes Denny will saddle soap just to knock the shine down just a yeah, little bit if more. Yeah, if, if you make it too shiny. I don't like a real shiny, slick look. You know, it makes it look more like plastic than leather. If you put too much quick shine on, it will crack. Yeah. If you put it on at the, at the right, at the right um, amount of it, not just glob it on there. Yeah. Yeah. Keep your can away, just like you're spray painting something. Yeah. But if you want me, I'll make a cut. I'm just, cut you don't, well, you don't have to I do it. I was like just, it too. Okay, just now we've changed its complexion completely. Oh my gosh, I don't know which one I like better now. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what I was just saying. Just get out there and try, and you're going to understand what you like. Can I do any tooling? Very poorly. But Denny and I have done enough of these videos together. I pretty much know the steps and how to hold the tools by explaining it to you. And I can demonstrate it, but I can't demonstrate holding the tool and whacking it with a mallet because I will mess it up. Most people, I'll tell you what, most people that come to me for the novice class and I say, have you done any, any leather carving before? And they say, yeah, a little bit, but just on my own. You know, that's how most people start. You know, that's how I did it. Mm -hmm. You know, I went to work for a saddle maker and he started showing me things, you know, and most of us don't have that, that uh, luxury of going to work for, for a professional. Right. You know, we're doing it on our own. But if you've got someone to kind of show you the ropes a little bit like we're doing today, you know, that's what it's all about. And you get a little bit better with every project you do. And don't be afraid. Like if you're doing these, use every one for an experiment, but use every one to make yourself a little better than the last one too. Yeah. Don't don't 
don't ever think that you're going to be as good as you're going to get because you can get better every time. Yeah. And we were talking a little bit about the backside. What what do you do with the backside of it? You can put a pig suede on there, or you can just put the antique paste on the back of it as you do the front of it and just dye the back of it and just call it a day. If I, if I was really wanting to make these fancy, I would line these with a piece of two to three ounce leather. Just another veg? Yeah. You know, that would make them finished on both mm -hmm. sides. If you were going to use them with just this raw side, you know, I would have I would have taped over the back of it yeah. and then done all my... Uh, right, so that way you wouldn't have this yeah. dye kind then of leaching Then when you take over. the tape off, your, it's clean. your backside is still clean. But then That's you, how we need to have our backsides, Denny. Yeah. It's clean. <laughs> you have the backside clean. You've heard it here first. Yeah. Keep your backsides clean. <laughs> <laughs> but then you can go over it with a gum trag or token all or... Toco Pro, or even just saddle soap, yeah. and, and slick off the backside a little bit. Uh, we got Neat's Foot Oil on our website. Just the regular 100% pure Neat's Foot Oil is just fine. Yep. That's what we have. Friday, we'll do coaster number three number of the three. set. Yes. Fourth one of the series, third in the set. It's very similar to the one we did today. The leaf is a bit different, and it's got a couple of other little features. A couple of foldovers. Some like foldovers, some longer chicken necks, mm -hmm. a different leaf, uh, same type of flower. Yeah, it's the same flower. That's what we got. So we'll be back on Friday. Yeah, come Anything back else? Friday. All right. I, I don't think we'll be able to check in with Liz on Friday, though, because they'll be inside the building that they are at. And I don't believe that it gets very... We tried to do it last year, and it just didn't work out. So maybe I can get her to do a recorded video, and we can play that and check in with her. That would be great. A recorded newscast. A recorded newscast. That's how That's they, what we need. Oh, it's like a pre-story. Yeah, she could predict the future. We can put like a little thing up in the side. It's like, we saw from the eyes of Liz. And then, then we could go. We cut to the story. It's like, zoom in here. And then we got her telling her little story. All right. All right. Yeah. We'll see you guys on Friday. Bye. Live shopping tomorrow at 2. Thanks, Will.